What's going on everyone? In this CCNA video, we're gonna go over our spanning tree lab. So if you just got done watching all of our spanning tree lectures, I'm gonna try to tie everything in here. Not gonna go as in depth over the fundamentals of spanning tree, but now we're gonna see some configuration and some show commands to kind of just solidify the knowledge we've just learned. So we're gonna start here in our EVNG topology. And as always, if you're one of our paid customers, this lab is going to be given to you in your Google Drive and our paid course uh, material. If you're watching this free via YouTube or any other streaming source, uh, these labs are definitely recreatable and you can go to our EVNG how-to videos and the beginning of our CCNA course and you can learn how to build labs just like this. And for everyone, the instructions are built in here or they're on our GitLab, which is this link right here. Okay, which should be in the description if you're watching that YouTube or the paid course, you should have a direct link. So what I'm gonna do now is just drag this over here, set off this. And first thing, we're gonna turn on all of our devices. And then to the monitor to my right, which you guys can't see, I'm going to have the instructions pulled up. So I'm gonna drag this over. And then we're gonna go on to step two, paste baseline from GitLab. So again, if you're building your own labs, you can go get a baseline from our Git repo and plug it into all these switches. If you're part of our paid course, these switches sure already have the baseline configured as well as all the trunks and VLANs. Because as we go forward in the course, we're just gonna focus on the technologies we learn. So our labs are already pre-configured for our paid course students. So now let's move on to step three, verify all VLANs and trunks. So let's go ahead and console into these bad boys. Again, we're using secure CRT as our native console. All right. And I'm gonna bring my secure CRT just like this, give you a full screen. Do this. And then again, our lab diagram here is also in our GitLab. So on one monitor, I'm looking at all this information while configuring, okay? And periodically, I'll try to go back to the lab environment or lab diagram to show you what interfaces are doing what. But again, if you're studying with two monitors, my suggestion as we get into these more complex labs, pull, put one side the network diagram and the other side watching this video so you can kind of follow along better. Okay, so step four. And sh or step three, verify all VLANs and trunks. So we're on our distro switch one here. Have our username and password. And let's go ahead and log into all these so we can get that out of the way because I'm going to show you a little trick with secure CRT when we're in our lab environments. You can send commands to all switches. So our show commands can get sent to every active session. You can come down here to this say send commands to all sessions and we can do show interface trunk. And now if we alt tab through all these, it did our trunk command or our show interface trunk command on all of our switches. Okay, so let's just verify here. Yep, let's do another show interface description. We can verify what the trunks are doing in every single which awesome. So we see that now let's verify all VLAN. So I'm going to come here to the access switches, show VLAN brief. Okay, we look here. That is good to go. VLAN 20 is on ETH 1, 2. If we want to check our trunk ports, we can also check here, check our network diagram. Perfect, now let's get into the spanning tree. So step four, ensure RSTP is enabled on all switches. So how do we do this? So the way we can check to see what spanning tree mode we're in is by just simply the show command show spanning tree. And this is gonna show us on a per VLAN instance of our spanning tree domains. And look at this, it's going to say spanning tree enabled protocol is RSTP. And with the space bar, Let's go ahead and actually we got to configure VLANs 10 and 20 on our distro switches. 
Do we have a spanning tree instance for them? Okay, and that's why we do the verified, right? I was going too quick. So we see VLAN 10 and 20 now on both our distro switches. Okay, awesome. So now let's run that show spanning tree command again. So what I wanted to show you is that the mode, the spanning tree mode you pick, you're picking it for all VLAN instances of spanning tree. You can't say like, okay, VLAN 10 is going to run regular spanning tree uh, or you, and then VLAN 20 is going to run rapid spanning tree. The mode is set switch wide, okay? So we want to ensure rapid spanning tree is enabled on all of our switches. Okay. Show spanning tree. Okay. And then show spanning tree. Awesome. So rapid spanning tree is enabled on all switches. That's step four. Now let me show you the command to change it if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and change the distro switch to regular spanning tree and see how that affects our neighbors. See if they're going to conform to spanning tree when connected to distro switch one. So we go to global config mode and type in the command spanning tree mode. And then we can just do PVST, which means per VLAN spanning tree, but this is going to be the 802.1D standard of spanning tree. And now that we've done that, let's go back to global or privilege mode, type in show spanning tree. And look at we're going through the different spanning tree states now. Let's quickly do show spanning tree here. And it looks like we're still running rapid spanning tree on distro switch two. But you see here this type, it's saying, hey, the neighbor or our peer on these interfaces is running regular spanning tree. So we're still running rapid spanning tree on our local instance here but we recognize that our peer is running the older instance, a spanning tree, essentially saying that, hey, this peer is going to take a little bit longer. And then we see spanning tree enabled protocol IEEE. Okay, awesome. Let's go back and change this to rapid spanning tree. So again, the command from global config is spanning tree mode, rapid per VLAN spanning tree, per VLAN being that Cisco flavor. And then let's move on to step five. Change the hello timer to one second and the max ages to 10 seconds. So again, the default here for our hello times is two seconds and the max age is 20 seconds. And if you look in the Cisco documentation, it tells you that the max age is supposed to change with the hello timers. So if I want to change the hello timers for VLAN 10 spanning tree instance to 10 seconds, and then if I type in do show spanning tree VLAN 10, according to documentation, it's supposed to move on to 100. Another thing to note here, though, is that these timers are set by the root. So you can see here that VLAN 10 uh, distro switch 1 is the root, but the root is setting these hello and hold timers or max age timer for the entire spanning tree domain. Okay, so if I go to any other switch and change the hello time or max age time for VLAN 10, it really doesn't matter because we're getting that timing from the root bridge. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look at a quick packet capture from this switch just to see into the BDPDU packet and look at that change time, that change to low time. And since it's every 10 seconds, right, it should take 10 seconds for VLAN 10's spanning tree to come across. So let's see if we can find VLAN 10. Not here yet. Not here yet. If I was a little bit better with Wireshark, I'd maybe, you know, uh, figure out how to search just for VLAN 10. There's VLAN 20, VLAN, let's see if I can do ID, ID 10, no, not a filter, that's okay. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Oh, there we go, found one, where'd you go? 
VLAN 10. Let's go ahead and pause it there. And let's go ahead and take a look into this spanning tree message, right? So per VLAN spanning tree. So here we have the encapsulation for VLAN 10. We have our ethernet frame here. When we see the destination is that per VLAN spanning tree MAC address here. So remember I was telling you that when the ports are in the blocking state, they can still allow control plane traffic. Now let's take an actual look into our BPDU here. So as we can see, this rapid, this protocol version identifier, we're using version two of rapid spanning tree. It shows that we're using rapid spanning tree. We see our bridge ID here, right? So we have our default with the root bridge system extension ID of 10 for VLAN 10. And then our path cost for this BPDU is saying zero because it's probably just uh, us sending it out, right? It's not calculating that cost yet. Or this is not a BPDU from distro switch one down to access switch four, right? And then here we have our hello time. And we can see that our max age is still set to 20. So uh, kind of going against what documentation says. And this is probably platform dependent whether or not the hello timer change will affect the max age change. Awesome. So kind of cool we get to see into that BPDU packet now, seeing, right, uh, the actual bridge ID with that system extension. Um, bring this up here. And then we can also see the port identifier, which is pretty much essentially saying this is port 01, or excuse me, 00. zero. Okay, awesome. So took a look into that BPDU packet. Now let's go on to step six. For VLAN 10, make sure that distro switch one is the root bridge. So let me show you how to do that a couple different ways. So again, we're gonna go from global config mode. We're gonna type in spanning tree VLAN, set our VLAN number that we wanna affect for spanning tree. And then we have two options here. We can set a number here to 4,096, and that will be lower than the rest of our switches at default. Or we can also run this macro is what it's called, um, where we type in VLAN 10 root, and then we set it to primary. And what this does, and I'll show you that on switch two, is learn from all the other BPDU packets what the lowest priority number is, and then goes below that. And probably, again, platform dependent, I can't say for sure, but whether or not it sets it straight to zero or just maybe one or two increments below is probably up to that switch's iOS. So for this, we're just gonna leave it with our set priority number. But for step seven for VLAN 20, making distro switch to the primary or the root, we'll do that other command, which is spanning tree VLAN 20 root primary. And then let's go check what it changed our priority to. So we'll do that with show spanning tree VLAN 20. And we can see that it changed the priority just below, just one 4,096 increment below 32,000, actually two increments below, excuse me. So awesome. And now let's go ahead and verify from our access switches that we have different routes for our spanning tree instances. So from switch three, we're going to have show spanning tree VLAN 10, we can see that ethernet one, two is our root port. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here. And one, two is our root port. And then we see one zero as the alternate. Now, why is that? Well, that's because ethernet one, zero should have a higher cost because it's gonna be a hundred this way and then 100 this way, equaling 200, whereas the cost here is 100. And then if it wanted to go this way, that would cost one, two, three, 300. Okay, awesome. So that's gonna be our root port there. And then if we type in the show command VLAN 20, one zero is gonna be our root because now our costs have changed where that's our direct link to distro switch two. And that's going to be our root. And then again, notice the rapid spanning tree uh, role here is alternate state is blocking. 
So a little bit different than regular spanning tree where this would just be um, non-designated. All right, and now let's get into our other features here. Step nine, ensure that when spanning tree is enabled, ensure that when spanning tree enabled ports receive a superior BPDU, they go into a blocking state. So let's test that out. So what we wanna do here is essentially say, hey, if our root for VLAN 10 receives a superior BPDU, meaning a BPDU that has a better bridge ID than 4,096, we want our ports to go, that port that received the superior BPDU to go into a blocking state. So we're gonna do this with something called root guard. So I'm going to put this on all of our trunks. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. So I'm going to do a range command. Interface range Ethernet 0, 0 through 1. And we got ETH 1 slash 2 through 3. And to an implement root guard, it's going to be spanning tree guard root. Now, how do we make sure that and now this is kind of a cool example, right? So since switch one is the root for VLAN 10, but not the root for VLAN 20, it is receiving superior BPDUs from its neighbor distro switch two. So let's see if there's a way we can make this just on a per VLAN instance. And there looks like there isn't. Let's see, VLAN 10, nope. Looks like there isn't a way. So this is kind of, I guess, a cool little look into, you know, we want spanning tree to be able to load balance per se, right? VLAN 10 go here, VLAN 20 traffic go here. So each switch is doing a lot of the, you know, the processing power on different VLAN domains. But when we enable root guard, we see an issue here. It's now blocking on one, two, because it's receiving that superior BPU, okay? So just kind of a, I guess, not a really a failure, just something to know about root guard. And if we go check out spanning tree VLAN 20, we see that now all these ports, even though they're in a designated role, which means it should be forwarding, they're actually blocking. And if we type in show interface status, because they're still connected, they're not in an air disabled state, which, uh, they say it's supposed to be an error disabled state on the documentation, but we see it's just blocking here. Um, it's blocking that state. Okay, so what we're gonna do here just to clean up our network here is just, we're gonna type in spanning tree VLAN 20, pri oops, priority, we'll do zero, just so it's the best. And maybe we, those ports will come out of that blocking state. Yeah, unblocking, unblocking, all right. And then we'll move on to step 10, it says on all user connected interface, ensure that the STP process is turned off. So we're gonna go ahead and do this on access switch three. And notice our only user interfaces are zero, one and zero, two. So what I'm gonna do here is go into our range command again. And I'm gonna ensure that the STP process is turned off. So I wanna turn off the spanning tree process, which is essentially saying that no BPDUs should be processed on these ports. So we do that with a command called spanning tree port fast. And you're gonna see a little warning here. This isn't an error that's saying port fast should only be enabled on ports connected to a single host, which we have, right? Because essentially this is saying, if you plug a switch into any of these interfaces, you're uh, leaving the possibility for a broadcast storm or switching loop. And okay, so that does it for this spanning tree lab. Um, stay tuned for our next labs where we're going to go over CDP, LODP, and Etherchannel. And I hope this video was informative and please stay tuned.